Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel and you guys know me. You hand me a phone or a game console or a tablet. I'm going to find a way to root it, jailbreak it, make it do exactly what I want to do and customize it. Today, I pulled out of storage a very old phone of mine with a challenge. This is a Plum Gator 4 rugged Android phone running Android 6.0. And it used to be FRP locked. I figured out a way around it because I've got so much experience in FRP unlocking. It was very difficult to make a video for. I wanted to make a video FRP bypassing it because I believe it would be the only video on the internet FRP bypassing it. But it was just really difficult to record because not only are there so many steps, but there was a lot of guessing involved because you can't really go back and figure these things out. And actually, this page is wrong. It is not an Android 7 device, it's an Android 6 device. But anyway, I wanted to show it off and I wanted to make a video, step-by-step -step guide, rooting the phone. So obviously, as always, oops, as always, I'm gonna show you guys how to do it, step-by-step. -step. So first of all, you're gonna need the firmware, which was kind of a pain in the butt to find but I did manage to find it and I'll put a download link in the description. You're also going to need Magisk and then you just need to pull the boot image out of the firmware. Firmware is simple, it's just a zip file. You open it up, go to firmware and you pull out boot, which is somewhere in here, right here. You just pull this out and drag and drop it. Once you're there, you want to ADB sideload or ADB install, I mean the uh, APK for Magisk. Sorry, I'm tired, but I wanted to do this today. So this is, I also assume you know how to get ADB on your system with this video. This is just a quick thing. So ADB install. I already enabled unlocking. OEM unlocking isn't uh, available on these devices. As you can see, it sends it. You can even tell I had to FRP bypass it. Really old file. That was a fun one, actually. But once it's installed, will eventually see it pop up. And then you want to actually AD, uh, ADB push is how I like to do it, just to make it easier. You want to transfer... Oh, wow. Yeah, you can see all the stuff I had to do. You want to transfer the boot image to the device. So USB for file transfer, it's already enabled. We can actually just do this, hopefully. Oh, God. Apparently I cannot just do that. So adb push boot.img and SD card. That'll push it to the phone. We're good to go. Now let's open up Magisk. You want to go install, install, make sure you're on Wi-Fi, give it permission, reserve, just in case, select file and patch. You want to go uh, show SD card. Internal storage, there's three gigs available. Oh my god. And you want to just patch it. <clears throat> this is going to take a fat minute because this is a slow phone. And then we're going to ADB pull. ADB pull. And I like doing it this way in videos because it teaches you guys something. So it's SD card. Uh, download Magisk patched and then whatever the 400 underscore there we go I can't slide it cool or jwe.img that file is going to have a different name for you oh I pulled it to the wrong spot hold on all right, we got it. So now we need to bootloader unlock and do all that shenanigans. So you can do ADB reboot bootloader. And obviously it's going to stop my screen recorder because the phone turned off. And that only works with ADB. So we are now in fast boot mode. You want to make sure your device is seen. So open up your device manager, especially these weird Android devices. You want to go through and manually install the drivers for them bootloader interface yes and now we can see it so fast boot devices 
there it is. So fast boot, flashing, unlock. This is going to factory reset your phone. Little pop up on screen. It says unlock bootloader. Yes or no. Obviously I want yes, so I'm going to hit volume up. And it returns me to fast boot. And what we can do is fast boot flash boot and do the patched one. Patched, fast boot, reboot. That's it. It is that easy to root a basic Android phone. This is how easy it should be, honestly, for every phone. That's how easy it is even on Google Pixels. Download the firmware, unlock the bootloader, patch it, flash it. Or, usually when it comes to uh, Pixels and more common devices, you also have a custom recovery like TWRP, Orange Fox, Lineage Recovery, Pixel Experience Recovery, Derp. Uh, I think Derp even has its own custom recovery now. Everybody got that recovery. So you can always use that for trying to flash a flashed uh, boot.img as well. I'm really curious on learning to make a custom ROM. And I know this is a very strange device, so I'll probably do it with the Google Pixel first. I have a spare computer set up with two terabytes of storage and a not so bad Intel 7th gen CPU in it. I might use that for learning Android uh, ROM compiling. And I'll first do it for like a Google Pixel. And then I'll come back and I'll see if I can make it an old Cyanogen for this thing. If the files are available. So if you guys want to see me learn how to compile Android, let me know in the comments down below. This device is rooted now. And actually here. I'll go through setup real quick. And I'll show you guys that it's rooted. All right, we're back into it. Now you might be wondering, what can I do with a rooted device? Well, it didn't leave Magisk here, so we gotta sideload that. So ADB install. There we go. So we're gonna reinstall Magisk Manager. What can I do with a rooted device? Well, you can debloat it, first of all, which is a lot of fun and makes these old devices fly. Now I'm gonna, Real quick, re-Google the APK uninstall because I can never remember how to do it, even with root. So give me one second. All right, it wasn't that hard to figure out, actually. Um, it's just adb uninstall dash dash user and then figure out the package name. So very simple to do, and you don't actually need root for it, which I'm kind of surprised by. So if we go up to apps, I believe we can see package names. So let's say email. Uh, does it tell me the package name in here anywhere? It does not. So I'm going to have to install something like Lucky Patcher to see it. So a real nice thing about actually rooting is instead of doing it by CMD, you can actually just do it with a tool like Lucky Patcher, which we're going to, I'm installing right now. It'll make it a lot easier because you literally just tap on the app and click uninstall. It's super simple. I love Lucky Patcher. Uh, your phone might flag it as like a virus for some reason because Google hates people. The other thing that you would definitely want to install is uh, Attaway and do it via root. And with Magisk, you can make the host file systemless, which means you can edit the host file all you want and make it do stuff that it's supposed to do, like blocking stuff. God, do you remember when Unknown Sources was just global? I don't. Yes. <coughs> Grant. So as you can see, it got root. Grant. It's going slow. It's okay. It's an Android phone from 2017. What do you expect? I just basically did this because I wanted to mess with it. You know what would be really cool is if I made a system backup and, ooh, I wonder if I could make a ROM that way. Old school ROMs versus today's ROMs, very different. So with the Galaxy S5, I used to have boxy ROMs. That was a weird time in my life having that nickname. Um, boxy ROMs is basically me taking Galaxy S5 firmware, 
messing with the system partition as much as possible and putting it back. And I'm wondering with the built-in updater for this, like through settings, I wonder if I could trick it into installing modified firmware. Now I'm playing with fire with that because if I edit the system file here, I wonder if I can edit that to make a custom ROM. That'd be really cool, and I'm really tempted. All right, let's open Lucky Patcher and go through, and I'm going to remove some stuff. Allow. I don't know why it wants location and phone. Allow. Uninstall. <coughs> Excuse me. Grant. I got a really cool video coming. If you guys are like Car Town or Racing Rivals fans, there was a leak recently that I totally called was going to get removed from archive.org. And it did. But I managed to get some Racing Rivals and uh, Car Town private beta files thanks to uh, archive.org. So if you're interested in that, let me know. And we'll go from there. So we're going to uninstall the Google Account Manager. Because I want to remove everything Google from this phone. We're going to hit yes. And then you want to do a system restart after you uninstall all the Google apps and all the apps, system apps you want to uninstall. Don't do it the way that I'm doing it right now. If you just willy-nilly uninstall... You're going to potentially run into problems for sure. So, like Google Drive, we're going to delete the system application. I don't use Google Drive hardly anything anyway, and I'm not going to put a Google account on here. There's no reason for me to. So, I'm going to remove all this. Maybe I'll put Micro G on it just to make it happy. But removing all the Google stuff is going to speed this thing up so much. Like, here's Google Play Music. We can uninstall this. All of this is going to open up so much space, it's going to make it faster because there's not crap running in the background, filling up RAM. There's so much we can do here to save space and things like that. So give me a couple minutes. We'll make sure that I don't break anything. I'm going to take this thing all the way to the point that it's just basically an MP3 player because it has a headphone jack. Um, I'm going to even uninstall the phone. I'm going to uninstall like auto dialer and stuff. I don't need this. So we're going to get rid of everything on this phone. You're going to be amazed at how fast this thing ends up being. So good news. I didn't break anything. Uh, we're down to this being all that is on the phone. And that's really all you need. Now, I know it's kind of funny that I removed everything Google and left Chrome. I don't know. You need a web browser. But... This is all that's on the phone now. That's it. It doesn't feel as laggy. It looks laggy in this screen recording. It's not on the actual phone. There's very little lag. If we go down to developer options, I can make it feel even a little bit snappier. This is one of my favorite things to do. Is I go to the animations. And on older phones like this, I just turn them off, honestly. But if you really do want to have them on, do 0.5. Yeah, that's all that's on the phone now. So how do I get apps? Well, I've shown this app off many times. This is Aurora Store. This is the way I like to get apps on a Google device is this or TapTap. So we're going to install this real quick wherever my CMD window went. I guess I can do KDB install. And it's installing. It's a little bit slow because obviously old. But you'll see it pop up in a moment. It basically allows you to connect to the Google Play Store anonymously, which is really nice. So that's how I like to download apps if I don't want to give my Google account info. TapTap is another great app marketplace, but that is more of a 
game oriented app. So I don't use that. Oop. Wanted to make host file. Uh oh. Well, we'll do that in a minute. But <coughs> sorry. Still getting over a cold. So go in and you can do root installer, Aurora service, AM install, whatever. I like doing root installer so it just does it in the background. You just give it root permission. Not hard. Hit next. I like my pitch blackness. I also like purple. Actually, this is nicer. I'm going to try this one. Next. All granted. Finish. And then you can hit anonymous. It allows you to connect basically to the Google Play Store anonymously. Sometimes it'll give an error. In which case you can try anonymous insecure, which is like basically non SSL. It does kind of suck for basic searching of apps. You want to be, you basically have to manually search what you want. So, like, if I want drag racing for Android, I need to search it. Even then, sometimes it gives errors. But yeah, if I want a drag racing like Pixel Car Racer, you have to search for it. Then you just click install. And it'll install. But it's this phone is fantastic now without all the Google apps. It's so much more responsive. So if I go here, before I think we only had like 3 gigs of open space. We should have like three and a half gigs now. The OS is still going to take up the most. So yeah, we have about three and a half. But apps is way down and all that, so it's not terrible. And I wonder what mem I should have looked at memory usage before uninstalling all those apps. So I have one gig of RAM. I have 409 free. It definitely seems a little better now. So I think it is really, truly cleared up a lot of overall space. And I'm sure there's more I can uninstall. Like this Google Switch, whatever. Whatever this thing is, I can uninstall. There's a whole bunch of junk I can still uninstall if I really want to. But as you can see, it's installing the app. Done. No, it's not. It's very slow. Not surprising. Let's be real. It's not surprising that this thing is slow. It's a phone from 2017. It's going to be slow. But yeah. Honestly, I don't think you guys need to see it. Attempt to play a game. It's clearly not going to do it very well. Oh, well, screw it. Let's try it. <coughs> Sorry. It's going to be laggy for you guys, no matter what I do. There's definitely a better way to get screen capture. But. I don't know. Just random. This is actually fairly smooth. I would say this is running probably 40 FPS. Let's see how our race looks. Definitely want to cache. Go drag, we'll go free run, beginner, just let it be automatic. <clears throat> and let it be snowing, because right here by my house, I don't think it's snowing right now, but it was last night. That's right. With the snow, it's definitely not happy. But it's, it's working, I'd say. It's definitely working. I'd say I'm probably at like 40 FPS. It's not grand. But it's not terrible either. And 3, 2, 1, go. 2, 1, go. It's an automatic trans, so it should shift by itself. There it goes. So I'll tell you guys if this feels like the actual... 
No, nah, this is running completely fine. This is great. I didn't expect it to actually run this game hardly at all, let alone at a smooth 40 to 50 FPS. The snow is definitely making it laggy. If I wasn't doing this on the snow level, this would not be so slow. Let's try the sunlight. Oh, let's not. Anyway, I'd say that's enough. This thing, all it's probably good for is for like listening to music or something. I don't think this thing is good for much more than that. Like, I wouldn't even give this phone to my son to play with. Wait, there's a Fiat in this game? I had no idea. Huh. I didn't know at all that there was a Fiat in this game. Since when? That's new to me. And... Oh, it's slow, of course. That's not a surprise in the slightest, you know. Oh, the Fiat's slow? Surprise. Let's see if I, see if I run any faster this time because of the way I launched. Ah, uh, he might be coming. There's the exclamation point. No, nah, I'm still pulling. There we go. I wish they would have added the multiplayer to this. They never did, though. Oh, I was faster. Heck yeah. <coughs> not bad, not bad. Let's see how this is on regular road. Because this is definitely not happy. It didn't ask me what surface. Wait, free run, automatic, order. It didn't ask me what cert. Oh, there it is. Weird. It's like it skipped it. Or like it took a ghost input. No, actually the snow didn't seem to make a difference. It's still probably 40 FPS. It's not great. I don't think there were graphics settings for this game. But we can't really blame that. Uh, tutorial off, high graphics off, game music off, that's fine. Let's see, does that make any difference? High graphics and low graphics physically look the same to me. <coughs> and I'll tell you if I feel a difference during the race here. Oh, there is such a difference. Oh, man, there is such a difference. Oops. Oops. Set me back. All right, let's see if there's a difference in my actual race ET. Oh, yeah, complete difference. So maybe I was running more like 20 FPS before, and I just suck at guessing for, uh, frame rate. This is entirely... Yeah, the 11 seconds before was like 20 seconds. Anyway, it's not a terrible device. It'd be like trying to use an iPhone 5 in 2024. But honestly, still a fun learning experience. So I hope you guys learned something. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.